Welcome back to Darren Burke Show. New location down here in Palolem Beach, Goa. I wanted to have the sea in the background, but um, the light, it just looked like it was really dark. I'll try to show you there. Uh, what the background is supposed to be, but it can't be because I'm fucking not technically gifted. But um, yeah, it's just imagine that behind me. But uh, you get this. But yeah, so um, yeah, came out to India to try to find myself. I was feeling a little shy at home, just getting back into the normality of things. And it just, I can only do that for a few months before before feeling like I should be somewhere else. But uh, yeah, as soon as, you, as soon as you come away, it just, it goes away then again. Like this is the real world for me. Absolutely amazing over here. Meet, met some, uh, met some of the fucking best people in the world, people living here, some of the best in the world. It's been, it's just, it's just paradise. It's paradise. Obviously, anyone, anyone who comes over here would feel, would feel a little bit better. But I'm going to be able to bring it home. So I, I've been able to get, uh, I've been able to get to perform out here a good few times, which has been class. It's been deadly because I was kind of nervous about performing other places because, say, say the last few months, my comedy has just been about me living in Toronto, being broke being fucking retarded but sure you can coming over here and talking about being broke it's like even if you're as broke as like there's just the, the level the dip the disparity of wealth is uh it's completely different so trying to tell people here that you're broke even though you're living away from home living in paradise for uh for months it's uh it's not as funny as as it is back in toronto where where a lot of people are rich but, uh, but you don't have to be rich to do this. I can fucking tell you that first time. And if, if anybody that hasn't traveled, just make it your business to fucking give it a go. Make it your business to dip your toe in the water. Because it's, it's fantastic. But I came over to, yeah, basically to find a better version of myself. Because I was, uh, I had, um, I'd been off the booze for like a month before I came to India. And I felt absolutely fantastic. I felt great. I was eating better. I was working out better. Uh, cutting down the cigarettes, doing all that. So then I kind of decided to myself, once I come to India, I'm going to do my first sober trip. It's going to be three months. A lot of yogi, a lot of meditation. Eating right. Come back an absolute beast. And, uh, and just stay off the booze because being off the booze makes me feel better. Makes me feel better about myself. Makes me look better. Makes uh, better people emanate towards me. And then I came here and I was on my own for like five or six days. So I was exploring and I was, uh, I was doing a little bit of working out every morning and, uh, and no booze for a week. And then, then an Irish lad fucking walked into the hostel. Um, so I was meant to meet one of the other lads that I had met in Mexico, Richie. So he wasn't here when we came in, but then he had sent another lad to meet him as well from Mullingar. Which is the fucking, I think it's all over the news at home. It's, Mulligar is one of the maddest places I've ever been. So as soon as I met him anyway, Richie got the two of us together. He was like, we, we grab a beer. He was just off the plane. It's like, do you know what? We're, we might be traveling together for a couple of months. First day, let's get to know each other. It is easier to get to know each other over a couple of beers because you open up, you, you, you're you looser, your your tongue is more on point. It's It's... I mean, may, maybe I'm wrong if someone's been sober for a long time, but I, I, I haven't. Like I've always, I've always met people around drink. We had a couple of beers, clicked, connected straight away. We were fucking friends instantly, and uh, basically haven't stopped drinking since. That was fucking three and a half weeks ago now. I come over to try to like quit the cigarettes as well. Like I was like, okay, as soon as I get over, I won't be, won't be smoking. You can get then I started to were used to doing 10 boxes so i decided i just if i smoke a 10 box a day fuck it it's way better than what i was doing at home i ended up one day i'd say i got five 10 boxes 50 fags i'd say we smoked one day because it's just it's just constant change when you're allowed to smoke inside it's it's just it's different level it's different it, it's so it's so much nicer you just don't there's no effort whatsoever it's literally just pleasure and uh 
but then uh, the last the last couple of weeks then i just I started doing yoga then every morning and uh i want to be modest but i'd say i might be one of the best fucking yoga yogis there there ever lived when i keep going at this i'm unbelievable i'm not really but I have been loving it and doing that every morning when you're after smoking fucking 50 fags the night before and drinking all night because I, I don't want to miss it because I fucking I absolutely love the teacher. I don't want to let her down. And uh, so I, I make sure even if I'm out on the beach till five o'clock in the morning drinking, I'm still up there at fucking five to eight and I'd be absolutely bollocks. So I needed to cut down the, the cigarettes a bit. So I bought this fucking Vape, even though I, I I always said I'd never do this. I always said I'd never smoke either. But uh, thanks very much. Well, I said I'd never do this. There's a lot of things I said I'd never do, and uh, and I will do anyway. I, I don't have a tattoo either, and uh, there's a very very good chance that I will have a tattoo by the end of the week. But um, but yeah, just being being away, being around different people, being around different opinions, different life. It uh, it just brings a new. I don't know. It opens up new possibilities. You should never really say, I would never do anything. But, uh, because you never know who you're going to be next year. And, uh, but yeah, so I bought the vape anyway to try to cut down the cigarettes. Uh, there's 2,500 puffs in one of these yokes. One of the first days, I, I, I'd say I nearly emptied the yoke on the first day. And still, once it kind of got a bit lighter, I smoked 20 cigarettes after that. So the day I tried to quit, I probably beat my nicotine record. But it's hard to say no to things over here. But yesterday I only smoked three. But uh, I'm not going to promise anymore that I won't smoke. I was just I'm going to do whatever I want, really. Especially while I'm over here. But, uh, yeah, so I had to... But, Yes, I only smoke three. It's going better. The yoga, the yoga I'm getting better at. So I, I actually, I had to find before I could, before I could get to a higher level of myself. You had to, I had to kind of find, find the bottom and get lost in the sauce for a little bit and fucking just go, go Mullingar for a few weeks. But uh, kind of getting back to a calm or even keel now. But I, I'm, I'm do, I'm, yeah. With with the with the yoga, the yoga is really helping. The yoga is really helping. But as well as that, I've been able to perform here. I've started to I started to do a bit of poetry, which I never did before. Like Ben, my friend Ben moved into our house uh, in Toronto uh, a couple of months ago, and uh, once I saw his poetry, I just fucking it's like I want to do that. I, I respect that so much. I, I think it's absolutely class. Then reading uh, a lot of Bukowski, so I so reading that i've been reading that since i came over as well and uh it just really made me want to give it a try so i bought um I bought a notebook then off, off a lad going around on the beach um and it was it's with the arm symbol on it and uh, i just i just really liked the look but i didn't know it was on here to tell me that and uh, but i recognize it now and it's just it's just cool it's nice nice paper on it and all that so I just, just as soon as he walked away then, I just sat down and took out the pen and I just thought about it for a second, just started writing and the way it came out was kind of in a poem, it just the first line rhymed with the second one, so I was like, fuck it, let's, let's keep going here. I'm after writing loads now, well, like five or six, but then I, there's an open mic on Mondays and I get to perform that, so I get to perform a song, perform a bit of poetry and, um, and then get into, uh, and then get into the comedy. So the comedy the other night went very well. First couple of nights, I was kind of, I was kind of nervous, you know, when you do, when you haven't done it for a couple of, when you haven't done it for a couple of weeks, and it's a new kind of audience. You always think, well, I haven't done it for this specific audience before, so maybe they're not going to like what I like, what I do. So you kind of hold back, and as well, it wasn't a comedy, it wasn't a comedy show, so people weren't there to see comedy; they were there to see music, and you kind of feel like, well, I don't want to ruin anyone's night, so I don't want to take too much chances i don't want to go too overboard it's just all this stupid shit in your head you just got to go up and do whatever the fuck you want to do and if they like it, they like it if they don't they don't but um so the first couple of nights it was uh, it was good enough but then i i had 
a lot of people had spoken to me over the last couple of weeks about the comedy and about how much they enjoyed it and how much they enjoyed the poetry and the singing and everything. So I was I went up with a good bit of confidence and a good bit of work there on Monday and I uh, got a great reception. Even got got in a heckler. Uh, one the one of the maddest cunts I've ever met in my life is over here. Won't even say his name just in case. Just in case I'm not supposed to. The the internet just went out there. Hopefully it recorded everything so far. I think it might have. Anyway. Yeah. So <clears throat> if this if this um, cut off where I think it cut off, then um, I'm just going to carry on from there. Not whatever. But yeah, so the comedy was going very well the other night. And then um, got a heck straight from the back of the room. It's like... Uh, When's the comedy starting? I knew he'd I knew he'd do it if he was there, but he wasn't there. And uh just started just started abusing me, but uh I took my time for a second, just took a couple of breaths and then was like fuck it and absolutely abused the shit out of him for a couple of for a couple of minutes. And it was very well taken because he's a kind of a half a celebrity over here. But uh yeah, absolute absolute head the ball from um from home. And uh, yeah, he, just, he goes off traveling, has uh, has his doll into the into the thing into the pocket every uh, every couple of day or every every week into the doll uh, or into into the into the bank account and just living like a king uh, over here in India, which I think is absolutely fantastic. I love it. I think I genuinely I sometimes I I find it hard to I find it hard to say it in front of like normal people. Because some people have uh, a real venom in them about like uh, about welfare fraud and stuff, you know. Because it is technically, I know you might be watching this. You're like, it is the worst thing in the world. I I, I agree that you feel that way, but uh, I couldn't give a fuck. I genuinely couldn't give a fuck, and and it's hard for me to say that often, you know, for even people in my family and stuff. Because uh, you know, you just feel like a degenerate saying it. But even though that's what I feel, it's either like. It, it, it's not that I change how I feel. So I feel that way. I feel embarrassed to say that because I know it's going to hurt your feelings a lot. And I know you're going to fight back hard against it. But I personally couldn't give a bollocks about anyone taking anything they can off the government. I fucking hate the government. And it, every time that someone won't, uh, every time someone doesn't take the doll, that's an extra 200 that's added to the fucking doll Christmas party at the end of the year. Or added to an extra bonus or some shitty fucking fuel bonus that some cunt gets. There's a woman in the, I, I don't know what her name is, and I might be talking through my hole, but I read it somewhere. She, so whatever, whatever they get there, 80 grand, 100 grand a year. And then her expenses, her expenses for the year was 185 grand. 185 grand expenses. So never put your hand in your pocket absolutely any time. We live in this country too. We were born into this country. We're Irish too. You think I'm the bad person for taking 200 quid that fucking that's going to go into some rich cunt's pocket instead if I don't take it? No. Taxes don't, it doesn't all go to make, to build the roads. It doesn't all go to healthcare. And as well, the health, healthcare, those, those are the people that should be getting paid more. The nurses are the people that should be getting paid more. Teachers, they get well paid, they get, they get time off and all that. I know that they, they might have, uh, complaints as well it's a very hard job or whatever but i they you know they should i feel like they should get a lot more than uh, than politicians sitting above fucking drinking coffee and arguing in the doll putting on a fucking show they're, they're paid actors the cunts. and uh so when i said i saw i met this lad and he's like he's over here he's getting 200 into the bank every week goes down and collects it drinks the absolute shit out of it smoking fags over here in india plays a bit of music does whatever he wants. I, I I love to see that. I love to see it. I wish the whole country would do it because then they would have to. They, we sh, we need to be getting together against these fuckers. The uh, they they're robbing they're robbing us blind for years. They've always been robbing us blind. They lie, and then when they get caught out in a lie, they do another lie to fix the first lie, and then they do a big fucking scandal in some other in some other fucking situation, and then you forget about the first one. And then by the time it all comes out, you're like, ah, sure, that was a while ago anyway. Maybe they've changed their spots. Fucking Bertie Ahern, the years, it was years ago now, like, and everyone has forgotten about it. 
to say he's the fucking finance minister and he didn't even have a bank account and now he's running for president again and maybe he's going to get in and and i don't care if he does or not but it, it just shows how, how short of a fucking memory we have we nobody nobody cares lula over in brazil he got taken out of presidency sent to jail for corruption got out of jail a couple of years later and now he's president again what like people have no reason to complain we should take everything you can off the government and if you can avoid paying your taxes avoid it as much as possible because they're putting it into their pockets instead you worked for it you're the one that worked for it you're the one that's hammering those fucking nails you're the one that's teaching those kids you're the one that's fucking nursing people back to health keep as much of it as you can and take as much of it off the government this might even get on youtube now that i'm thinking about this might be doing myself an awful disservice there's only about 40 people that watch it anyway and now um now youtube are gonna fucking shadow ban it but whatever it's how, it, it's how I feel. It's how I feel. It's how I've always felt. But sometimes you just don't have the confidence to say it. Living over here, it's just uh, it's just giving me a new... I mean, I do it every, every time, and then I come back with this new perspective, happy feelings, and I bring that back to Toronto with me, but then Toronto kind of fucking drags me down. Even though I love being back there for that first couple of months, because Toronto's an amazing city amazing people i have such amazing friends back there and i actually do like bartending and uh, obviously i like doing the comedy uh so i like getting back there but i just i need to dip out sometimes because it's just it's all about money it's a constant fucking struggle to have your money for rent have your bills paid and the bills going up all the time and now the gas bill is fucking double like i haven't looked at the news for a long time now so my head is fairly clear so when i'm at home i'm fucking launched into the conspiracy theories uh just getting angry just going to sleep hoping i'm like please just wishing please when i wake up let there be a gun under my pillow so i can go after that cunt trudeau like you know, just think about this is the fucking nonsense that i'd be thinking but now that i'm over here that's it doesn't exist rent even though i still pay it it, it just doesn't exist i i know i'm going to be absolutely bollocks uh for money when i go back uh to toronto but I just, I refuse to believe in it. I refuse to believe in it because it's just, it's, it, it's not a case of whoever works harder gets more money. It's not, it's not that. It, it's not, not fully anyway. I mean, maybe for, maybe a small bit. Um, fuck it, I was going to say something there. Oh yeah, fuck it. I'll, um, since, since I went on that little rant there, I'll throw you out the poem. Which I'll, I'll probably release anyway. Uh, probably release anyway. Uh, the performance I did the other night, but um, but this is it. This my uh, my anti-government poems. The other ones are kind of basically love poems about fucking people that I've met for five minutes. I um, uh, maybe I'll read one of them too. Fuck it. But I'll read this one now since that's the that's the one I was on. I gotta face it. I must be one of God's favorites. He's gonna shake my hand when he comes to save us. He intervenes no matter what my mistake is. No money through my mane and I'm still eating steak because I don't, I don't do what they try to make us with the shitty wages and the fear mongering in the papers. They're trying to take us on a ride but I see the fakeness. When you're one of God's favorites, he does all he can to wake us from the sleep that capitalism takes us. Just had to hit the DMT vape once. Then my brain went through some changes. No more fretting over credit card statements. They say we're wasters if we're not doing meaningless labors, making minimum wages to make money for the faceless corporations. I no longer have the patience, refraining from my temptations, from traveling the world and meeting Asians. Maybe Bayesians or even Russia meet some different Caucasians. They're trying to keep us in the basement while they're in the penthouse wasting the money that we make them, working ourselves into early graves then. But since I'm one of God's favorites, he showed me to see through the fake threats. And the politics is like a film set. Just put your brain through a reset. Unplug your fucking TV set. Adopt a different mindset. Jump in cold water, get your head wet. Understand they don't care about you. They're taking your taxes, playing you for a fool. They want to turn you into a robot. You think I'll obey? No, I will not. I've got places to go and people to see. I won't sit in my house to enable your grief. You dream of hoarding money, I dream to make people laugh. When it's all said and done, only one of those lasts. Stop paying your taxes. Stop paying your rent. Society's broken. The system is bent. 
I'm sending my message. My patience is spent. The cost of my silence is making me dead. But I'll come back as a lion if you'll have to kill me again. Yeah, that's uh, more shit that's going to get me taken off YouTube. But uh, hopefully people like it, anyway. Like, yeah, I'll give you one of the fucking loved ones. Fuck it. No, I don't really want to because I really want to talk about it right now. If I'm going to release this soon. But, uh, yeah, I'll throw it out. Anyway. And we'll, we'll see. We'll see what comes to my mind after. Fucking hope the first uh, half of this recorded because the internet cut out. But we'll see. We'll figure it out. All right. I wrote this for someone over here. Um, and I'm a fucking lunatic for that shit. I just I, I fucking fall. I fall very quickly for beautiful women. like, And uh, I always have. And it just it gets me in trouble. And then I say, find one that likes me back. And then I, ju I just kind of get sick of it. And then fall for someone else. Fall for someone else. I just keep, you know, that whole year song, fall in love with someone new. Every day with someone new. That's, that's, it's a song about my life, basically. But uh, yeah, you can either hide it or you can tell the truth and fucking enjoy it and embrace it. Anyway. Her lips are crying out to me. I love the darkness of her eyes. The smile drives me crazy. Ah, the gap between her thighs. Her voice sounds like music. Her words, they move my heart. Her vibrations took a hold of me and her body full of art. Her hair falls like a wedding veil, her mind an adventure to explore. As Jerry says, when she walks, her feet don't touch the floor. Her skin is smooth as porcelain, her cheeks perfect to kiss. When we return to our separate lives, it's Aurora I will miss. She taught me many lessons, things I didn't know about myself. Made me think things I hadn't thought before feel things I hadn't felt. My life had many heartbreaks, and she made them go away. New destinations are calling me, but she makes me want to stay. I'm 5,000 miles from Limerick. She still makes me feel at home. I gave up weed a while ago. Now it's her gaze that makes me stone. What is it about beauty that makes me feel like this? I want to wake up next to her. I know it would be bliss. But when it doesn't happen, I can't let it get me down. No matter how hard I fall in love, another always comes around. What is a girlfriend anyway? Conversations and some sex. A couple of months of cuddling before she turns into my ex. The honeymoon period always ends when she starts to piss and moan. Fuck it, I have work to do. And I work better on my own. I don't believe that last part. I'm known to talk some shit. All I have, I'd give it up love for just one night. Truth is, I lose all control when her eyes are works of art. Sometimes I act a big man, but it's just to protect my heart. Yeah. Sati shit. But fuck it, I, I'm actually loving the writing the poetry. It's just all the, you have that like stuff inside you and you don't let it out it just it kind of consumes you and it fucking it, i don't know it just makes you it makes you kind of sad or whatever since i started writing the poetry uh, i haven't been sad anymore because i just I, I i just get it out get it out of my system no matter what happens in life or whatever you just kind of live in the moment live and and people have been really enjoying them people have been really enjoying them over here so it's uh it's been it's been fun to share them and uh once I get back home as well, I'm gonna start. Uh, I'm gonna start singing a lot more as well because I do have a kind of a okay voice. Uh, I just need to get better at the guitar, and I want to. I just, just keep performing as much as possible when I'm home. Just that's what I'm. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. I mean, I like serving tables. I do actually like bartending because I get to meet a lot of people. I get a lot of stories out of people, but I don't want to have to do it. I prefer to. Uh, I prefer to be able to pop in whenever I kind of want to and. Uh, make some money from performing, which is a possibility, uh, as long as I do a little bit of work. Um, 
Yeah, I have so much of shitload more to, to talk about as well, but I'm gonna I'm gonna eat the breakfast here. This is gonna be the end of this episode and uh might do another one straight away about about uh, about Mumbai. But uh yeah, until then. Thanks very much uh for listening and uh we'll chat to you later. Before I go, remember Nietzsche said and those who were seen dancing were thought to be insane by those who could not hear the music. Remember that one, you might see it written down somewhere sometime soon. Go and enjoy your lives, motherfuckers, no one else will do it for you.